Solutions up to three fans for push pull configuration. Uh, 90 millimeter of internal top space with top uh, 280, 360 millimeter, bottom 240, 280 millimeter radiator support. So, in other words, the if you remember in the Phantom case, one of the big deal, the big issues was that the motherboard would sit so high up towards the top of it that radiators would almost push down into it. Apparently, there's some extra space here, so that doesn't happen anymore, or it's kind of fixed a bit. Um, rear I/O light. See, so yeah, there's a light on the rear I/O port plate thing that has a light on it to illuminate things. You know, all the stuff back there, so you can see it instead of taking a flashlight in one hand, careening over it in another, and trying to undo stuff. Um, you got a viewport kind of thing, stylish acrylic window. Uh, you can't really see it too well down here. Um, has custom lighting on the case. Go any color. Um, also has a pedestal that comes with it. No kind of feet things. Um, dust tray goes in the bottom for keeping dust out of the... Well, it's for bringing air in for the PSU, but we're pushing it out, not in, so... That's fine. Um, removable HDD cages and a large storage capacity for, I think it says six drives. Uh, adjustable interior pivot. Oh, that's right. It's got a 120, uh, 140 millimeter pivot kind of thing on the inside to either shoot it on your cards or into your case onto the graphics card or something. Um, dual USB 3.0 and quad uh, USB 2.0. I was talking about the front here somehow. Also has a microphone and audio jacks along with SD media card reader. That's cool. Uh, for high-speed data transfer and quick access to multimedia. And next generation Phantom carries uh, da, 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 integrated hue lighting. Yeah, so it has that custom lighting thing in there. Um, oddly enough, the black case doesn't have this extra lighting strip on this side. Or maybe that's something else I'm looking at here entirely. I don't know. It looks like a light strip, though. Um, I haven't actually opened this yet, so it's going to be another, you know, interesting thing where we can experience together. And this case is massive, so I'm just going to take the case and put it down before it. Because I either have to do that or get a freaking step ladder or an actual extension ladder to get this thing out of the case properly. And, no, no, extension ladder wouldn't make it. Oh, I just could knock out the ceiling, but that just feels kind of hurts to having the ceiling. So, let's see. Okay. This is my second NZXT case, and I'll probably never get another branded case unless they go to business. NZXT makes awesome cases. Matter of fact, I think they standardized a couple things on the original Phantom that are. Use the library one these days. So you get an interesting slick little case here. Sounds like there's a bunch of screws and stuff in it. It's also taped down, which I guess is a good thing. So if you know, you just like me, shake them and the lid comes off, the things don't go flying everywhere and you spend three hours looking for all the pieces. more than taped down. It's got like a, yeah, it's got like a, wow. It actually has like a, oh, this is nice. Sweet. This is awesome. It's actually compartmentalized. Let's see if I can do this without spilling everything out. So you got all the parts here and they're in little kind of cubes. So they're all separated out. So you just, you know, you don't have to go digging through everything to find stuff. You just go to a particular slot. I was thinking about getting something to, you know, do this kind of a thing. I also this is just for the NZXT stuff, but you get this thing. I don't know if it would have some sort of rubber gasket looking thing. I shall find out when I check out the instruction manual. There's a warranty. Um, for gamer enthusiasts who care, blah, blah, blah. blah. So basically it's just kind of a uh, fluff piece for their other cases. Like, I guess, 
you know, you bought this case, so maybe I'll go out and spend another $300 on one of our other cases, too, because, you know, gamblers always do that. The Kraken G10 GPU bracket. <clears throat> FZ series fans. The Spire T2, uh, T20, T40. Those are air coolers. They got all kinds of stuff. They actually have their own power supplies. That is interesting. I didn't know they did. Modular. They're pretty nice, actually. A bunch of uh, different accessories as well. So yeah, it's just a nice thing that has all that stuff. Then we got the manual. It is in its own separate bag, so you know you have a high value thing. We have a bag for the manual. Because you know the manual's got gold on it or something. So I'm gonna look at the components that come with this case. So I'm gonna find out what this rubber thing is. Okay, yeah, screws, screws, thumb screws, screw and screws. Um, cables, zip ties. Don't mention about what this rubber thing is, yeah. It says it's supposed to have a, it might be in the case somewhere. Uh, let's see. Talked about all this stuff. I don't see any mention of what this thing is. It's not on the parts list. That's interesting. Oh, okay. This this goes. This is a cover for your, your um, USB ports. That's what it is. It doesn't say that's what it's for, but that's what it's for. Because the outline of this matches exactly the outline of the port on this image here. I gotta find it again. Uh, again, you might not be able to see it's really small and my camera's all the way, phone's all the way over there, so it's like the bottom center section there on this this side of our So let's go ahead and take this over here somewhere. Uh, let's get this case out. Massive thing. I'm running out of room to put computers out upstairs. I have to buy some sort of desk or something for this, I think. Let's see, this is phone piece out of here. I originally wanted to go with the black case, but Amazon decided to either run out of stock or stop selling, or their supplier ran out of stock of the black case to sell for selling Prime. And so I ended up getting the white case. And I think it's going to work out a lot better. I like the white case better anyway. Because it's going to work better with the design I had in mind with the cooling and all that. <clears throat> so, let's see. Oh, that's not going to work very well. Neither is this. Wow, this is a huge case. <laughs> You'll see what I mean in a second here. They can probably talk from the box. It's massive.
All right, so got you guys mounted on the. I figured about that one. If you watched the pre video, I had that one part that like the foam on the back, and I couldn't figure out what it was. Kind of curved, had a clip on it. As for as a quick clip thing for putting on a hat or something, which is where we're at now. So right as soon as I got this thing up here, my camera just decided to stop recording out of joy. Now the battery died on it, so. Um, let's go and take a look here. Looks like they've updated the hinges a bit. Um, instead of just being that really dinky kind of single little, you know, pin kind of thing, it looks like they have. Um, let me see here. I've got a phone that has cameras. Is this still recording? Yes, it is. Okay. Let's see if we can do the. Yeah, the Hall of Mirrors Doom thing here. That's just awesome doing this. Of course, it's probably not very good for the camera. Anyway, it feels like Persona 4 almost. So, um, flashlight. Boom. So, yeah, you can see here how the. So you can see here how the, um, you got the uh, hinges here. It's still kind of, it's like built in still with a clip that goes into the front, but you got it bolted onto the front of the door here. So there's not really, compared to the other uh, case, there's not really too many ports on the front here, just uh, four external facing ports. Although, you know, you're only going to have probably one, a max two optical drives, so. That's not really too much of an issue. Let's see, I have some front loading USB ports. Up here we got, um, I can't really see it because angle's bad here. Move this back a bit. You gotta go to the top of the case there a bit. So you got a, uh, Right here, this is for the hue, so like this changes the color, I guess, um, on the front of the case, but you can also probably do it internally too. Um, LED mode uh, probably turns it on and off. And then, uh, what is this? It says ID, IO LED, I'll go for the back, the backlight. And there's your. Uh, SD card reader, right there. Um, so going to run over here to the top of the case. Probably we're not going to need the light. So, you got these I/O ports here. Two, you got the two USB 3.0 slots and the four 2.0 on that thing that I was looking at earlier. Where did I put the case at? Let's see it. This thing goes in like this and uh, will act as like a shield for that kind of. I think it actually fits down in there pretty well. Let me see. So there's two little things on the side that go into holes that are here, or it's supposed to. Um, I just don't snap and they just kind of fit in to cover up the slots there, protect them from dust and whatnot. I think it's, it'd be nice if it like would fit in there and you'd be able to like kind of do this with it. So if you weren't using it, you could just flip it down the whenever you were flip it up, but it works either way. Um, not sure what this LED here is for. Uh, yeah, you got the LED strip in the inside here of this, uh, this side. It's also one on the other side where the fan controller is. This side also, oh never mind, there's no fan controller in this one. Well, it's where the fan controller would be on the older cases. You got your audio and microphone jacks. Um, plus and minus, I'm guessing that's for the fan, or the LED. Um, S. 
Not R5 or something, I'm not sure what that is. I think these are the on and off, yeah, so let's reset here. And this one is the power button. Not really much to talk about on this side of the case. There's actually no fan ports on this side of the case, so there's no air coming this way, like on the uh, on the original Phantom. Here's a screw down here. I bet I don't. I bet you anything. This is this. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So it's missing a screw from here. It came out in the case. It's the other um, kind of latching screw that goes in here. So it's just kind of just, you know, go down with it like that. It's really, I really like the, these screw designs with these. So you don't have to, you don't go all the way down, you just do that. It'll hold it on. As long as you don't screw it all the way down, you can just do that and take off the side. So you got the uh, viewport here. I actually had two, well, let's turn the light back on here. I actually had two. There's actually uh, two things of cellophane on it, so you'll have to go on the inside and take that off too. Down here you got your uh, one of your two 100 uh, millimeter fans to put there. Some uh, housing for airflow. And this doesn't have like a swing door on it like some of the other ones did. It just comes out so far and then you just kind of pry it off. Um, I haven't really looked inside the case yet too much, so let's have a look around. This on this side, slide off. So as you get, it's a really freaking huge case. Let's see, stuff out of the way here. Uh, thought about using the tripod, but it doesn't work with this camera, so I'm going with the head-mounted unit here. It's better than using duct tape, I guess, or electrical tape in this case. All right. So this is a massive case. Um, I have just you know tons of stuff everywhere. Um, lots of the patented uh, slots here for cable management. They actually put the cables through on this side this time. That's pretty good. Um, not sure what half of this stuff is. Uh, some of it's fans, obviously, but. Like this one here looks like it's some sort of specialized header. Um, oh, I know what it's for. It might be the SD card reader. Might plug into a. I don't know, Rancy. It's the uh, USB 3.0 header. That's what that is. Uh, these are USB 2.0s. Yeah, there should be two of them. So it looks like you got two per each. So you got two. Or actually, there's three of them. All right. USB 2.0, 2.0. So is there four 2.0s then? Or just three. Uh, no, this is the HD audio. Okay, yeah, so this one and the, these two are for the yeah. So it's like two per port essentially. And this uh, will connect up for your audio jacks. Um, this one uh, SATA. Interesting SATA. Um, this might be for the the card reader, I suppose. Then you got some uh, fan. Three fan or four? Three pin fans. So I'm going to be, pretty much everything I'm using is going to be four pin for the cooling solution. Um, but yeah, like these fan, this fan here and these, this one up here. Actually, there's only, oh, I bet there's a fan in front. Usually there, yeah, here it is there. You can kind of see it through the side here. Let's see the 200 mil. So you got 200 mil here on the side and in the front, and then the 140 here in the back. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll put the 140 down here, if it'll fit. I think that mount will take the 140, I'm not sure. I'll take this this one here, and I don't know what we'll do with it. We'll put it somewhere, figure somewhere to put it. Um, and then uh, yeah, we'll have the two 140s up here, 140 here for the radiator. I have the larger radiator up here. Actually, looks like there's a little housing up here. Let's see if we can... Pop the top off. Well, let's go over the rest of the stuff before we go looking at the top. Um, down here you have a spring-loaded, nice feature, uh, fan. Uh, you know, it's actually a huge thing. I think, I think it goes all the way through. Okay, so there's two fan ports down here, so I'll probably put the other 240, other 120 underneath here. 
Uh, but yeah, it's, it's spring loaded, which is awesome. Snaps right back in, our springs back in. Got the uh, place to put the PSU. It's got the uh, stilts to hold it off the floor so you can have that. I think there's also a filter here, but I don't know if it's removable in that same fashion. Oh, yeah, it is here. There's one in the back. Cool. Same process, spring loaded. It's a really nice case. Um, you got a ton of IO ports. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like ten ports on the back here. I'll never use them all. Um, no quick kind of connects on this one now. Um, so it's all, you know, traditional kind of things. The, uh, thumb screws. Ow. You got, you got four slots for external water cooling solutions. So, like, if you have a, uh, cooling box or something, you can run the tubes out through these grommets. Um, the motherboard tray obviously does not come out in this one. I don't see how it could. Um, got the fan. This is the tiltable fan thing here, so you just undo that and let it fall on the floor. Then that just swings up and around. There's no fan for it though. Um, it is removable somehow. I think there's a couple, yeah, it's probably connected in here somehow. Maybe on the other side as well to go in there and get around in there and stuff. Now on this model, the how the drive housings are a bit different. They actually load from the other side, um, which is interesting. Um, they still load facing this way, the drives do, so the cables go out this way, but you load them in this way instead of pulling them out this way, which is actually nice because you, know, you don't have to now kind of rip the cables out of the motherboard when you're trying to pull the drives out this way. Um, I think this is a really, let me see, it's like a, I was trying to figure out what this, it's a quick release kind of thing, you just pull it up or down or something. I was just thinking maybe it would just, you know, pop out, but I guess that's not the case. Or maybe it does, I'm just not doing it right. Um, so I got these up here, again, the traditional, uh, NZXT release system, kind of annoying. So this comes out here, this kind of comes off of there, and you lock it forward with this. So, snap it down in. Ah, come on. Um, so that goes there, the snap's on there. I'm guessing that what happens is that when you pull back on this, it unlocks it. Okay, so that, this, they're already unlocked. This is unlocked. That means you can... Alright, so I guess this is locked. Forward is locked. All the way back is unlocked. And then you can, you know, take it off there. Okay. Good that we cleared that up. Although it should have been obvious. Um, Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the top here now. Probably have to take the front section off, like on the previous model. Or may not come off. Maybe we just go from the back. Well, let's consult the instruction manual before I go tearing stuff apart here. A little more involved case. Um, let's see. Airflow components, installing, fitting installed, sweated view, um, fan installation. Work only installation, power supply. Let's, let's try fan installation, so 19. Because that's that would be fan access to the top there. <laughs> Here we go. Are these for some instructions? So I can see if it's showing up on here or not. So, actually, I'm not in the English section anyway. Or is it even in English? No, it's only got one section or so. Um, okay. Front panel support. 
Um, left side panel support. So where does it talk about taking off the... I'm trying to figure out where the instruction is. There we go. Boom. Plastic panel removal. Holy. Well, this is kind of involved. Let's see. So that's for the side panels. I want the front. So the front comes off just like on the original. I just guess it takes a little more oomph than what I'm putting into it. Which is wholly reasonable because I have no clue how this comes off. Let me take the uh, other side off too. May have to do that. Um, Got to be careful with the screw head. It's actually pretty sharp. It's not actually technically the right size for this. All right, I got them loosened up anyway. I'll take this off. Anyway, it's me to get to the other side to show you the other section of this case. All right, this comes out. Same process as on the other side, probably. No fan cables to worry about on this side. So not actually attached to that or anything. All right, let's see. So according to the guide, it's supposed to come right off. And there goes a screw. So, um, so there's plastic clips holding on the front panel. Oh, I see. That's why it won't come off. They actually have clips in here. Ah, uh, so that's a little more of a ergonomic design than the other one. The other one, you just kind of snap them off and back in. This one. Actually, it's a little bit more annoying though because now to get into it, the top of this, you have to go in here, take off both side panels, and dig around in it. It's actually a little bit more annoying. This other side's a little bit harder to get off. There's not many, not as many grip holds on this side. Clip here, clip here. Let's see. Move the top panel by lifting. Alright, so I'm on the right path here. It's just that these other clips are not playing ball. <sighs> Let me try this again. So, yes, yeah, so we should be able to maybe we have to do them both at the same time. Definitely a little harder from the other side. Um, I'm going to stop recording while I try and get this off, and then we'll start again once I can. Alright, so I managed to get it off. What I had to do was essentially just come in here and um, get this off, kind of take this and leverage it and pry it off, and the rest of them popped off on their own. Not sure how good that is for the longevity, 
longevity of the clip system, but so I was able to get it off. So this one should just come right off. No clips or anything to do with it. These just popped right off, according to the uh, according to the book. Then again, yeah, just see these two systems. This the system seems to never just work easily. You have to manhandle it. So eight, remove top panel by lifting up the center area revealed after removing front panel. So lifting up on this section. Just as easy as that, even though there's all these cables in the way. It's like trying to find another handle there. Well, I'm going to pause recording again while I try and get this off again. Because it's going to take me a while, I think. Okay, so I finally got the top section off. And let me tell you, it's a pain. Here's a pro tip. When you're going at this, because this thing's in the way here, what you want to do is you want to get your thumb underneath the section here that's there. And this one around the upper edge of the, you know, this little, you know, uniquely placed grasp here. So I'm going to go like this. And you just want to kind of rip up like that. Not rip, but you want to pull up that way. Now I'll get it started, and then you can just go over this side, and it'll just come off all the way once you get far enough. Um, there's just no handhold gripping on this X, all this. So, at the top here, you can see all this stuff. It's actually double. Uh, is it double filtered? No, it's single filtered. However, this filter's got kind of a bend on it, which is interesting. It tells me that um, this, this one screw's not all the way down in, really. All the way. Flip it around here. Yeah, I really should get a different bit. That would help a lot more. Um, let's see. Well, I don't know where I put them at. They're over here. Oh. Uh, let's go with a flatter one. That should work. Let's see. Not sure if it's actually doing it or not. Yeah, that's on more firmly. Oh, that screw looks like hammered junk now. Probably already stripped out. These screws are really low quality. Um, so that's probably one of the first problem points. The other problem point is over here with that handled. So the LED light strips are used are made done with high intensity LED lights. So essentially, it looks like at the end of each one of these strips, there's a little hole um, that they go into, as you can see here, or a section where they're exposed to it, and then just displays the light all the way through. And it's a fine way of doing it. It's actually a lot more cost effective than running LEDs all the way through stuff. Plus if they did run LEDs through all the way through it, then it wouldn't be removable. They do that with all these. This one here, this one here, and this one here. So you got the three areas of lighting. Um, here's the front fan here. There's a filter on the front part of the case. Actually, it's like a snap-in filter. It doesn't um, screw in, which is interesting. Again, it's just using those clips. Just like that. So you can replace it easily or remove it for cleaning and whatnot. Um, when you take the front off, you want to take the bottom tray out and dust filter out. So let's have a look at the back of the case. Since we've got that over here now. All right, so we got our, here's that one uh, cable here, the extension for the uh, eight pin for USB, uh, for the motherboard power. It's on the back side here. Here you see our drive, the drive cages are weird on this one. They're very low key design. Um, it's 
So yeah, it's a very interesting design as opposed to the previous versions, or at least the ones on the originals. And those are the drive uh, types that are used for everything. Um, got all the cabling around here. Tons of stuff. Um, lots of uh, tie points on here for cabling uh, stuff for management. I don't see any like motherboard slots for you know, like mounting an SSD on the back here anywhere. Um, Maybe there's supposed to be one down here far on the front. I don't think this case is designed with that in mind. Um, hope that snapped that off, shouldn't So that's really all there is to the case. Um, it's a pretty awesome looking case. We'll see how it uh, works for size. I'm getting the graphics cards tomorrow, so I'll be able to do the maybe do some fittings tomorrow, the parts. Or maybe not, I don't know. I might, I might just wait till we're building for that. Um, but I'm going to go read through the instructions some more and figure out how to get the drive bays out of there and then report back. Um, there's one thing. And I've forgotten what it was. I think it was for the the power supply. I was reading the manual and something caught my eye. But I'll, I'll go back through it and see what happens. See if I see it again. Mention it later. But... That's going to be it for now, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed uh, the uh, unboxing so far. Still got a bit to go. Actually, a lot to go. Um, so we got the case, the uh, power supply, the kilowatt, the water block for the CPU, pump top, pump, um, radiators, GPU coolers, reservoir. I think that's everything that I've covered so far, and uh, we're going to do a lot of them, a lot more of it tomorrow and uh, on Monday or Tuesday of next week, and then we'll probably start the build between next Friday and next Tuesday. That'd be the following after next week, so next Friday or the two day after, the Tuesday after next week. And of course, I won't really mean much because this video. Well, I might. Get these videos all up, you know, all rendered out and edited and get them up on the, um, no, it'll be the pre-video, which was recorded, uh, like, two days before this one, I think. But yeah, so, um, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, and, uh, I will see you in the next series of unboxing videos. Hi everyone, this is Gio Will from Icon Production Split, and I'm going to move you a bit more here. Now we're back to continue our unboxing for our uh, new 2015 PC build. Got a whack of stuff in today, so we're going to go ahead and talk about it. I want to mention, though, I didn't mention this before about the camera <clears throat> on the pre build video. Um, it actually gets very hot inside of the casing, just under normal use, and if it gets too hot, the camera will actually shut itself off, so. So that's kind of a little interesting feature on there. Also, uh, some quirks with the camera. I was working with it last night to uh, get the footage off it, and for whatever reason, I just it gave me hell last night. <clears throat> Excuse me, a second here. Let's see. Um. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Friggin' sinus issues still, again, always. Um, but that's how you know it's you know, an authentic video for me because I'm always clearing my throat and every single frickin' one of them. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I had it plugged in. I was moving a bunch of files, so I started the process of getting files moved over <clears throat> to my B drive. That's my 6 terabyte drive. And uh, I've got tons of stuff to move and all that. And um, while I was doing that, I was uh, trying to get footage off the camera. And um, all of a sudden it stopped working. The uh, LCD wasn't showing the, like, the USB thing that tells you that you're going to go to a computer. It wasn't uh, bringing anything. You know, the conversion wasn't working. Um, the camera even didn't register on the computer, my computer settings. <clears throat> I 
I'd actually take the battery out and remove the um, uh, SD card, micro SD card, before I could get the camera to re-register with my computer as an object at all. So, obviously something there. It might be because I haven't updated the firmware on the camera yet. <clears throat> something I should have done when I first got it. So, I'll see what happens with that. But, this, that's a couple, one of the one quirks I found. It's also dropped out while it's been converting, too. It happened a couple times while I was trying to play GTA. I think one time it was legitimately a problem because... GTA 5 is a freaking just mind frack of how it works. You have to have um, hard drive space allocated for a paging file. You, just, you have to. Um, otherwise, the game won't work properly. And what was happening was is that, for whatever reason, my computer decided, well, I'm going to be a stupid mother fracker, and I'm going to just take it off, my, off the SD card. <clears throat> SD drive. Like, you know, the uh, problem with that is that SD... Uh, SSD cart uh, drives, I keep on saying carts, because SD cards, SSD drives don't like paging file allocations, you know, they don't like to be used as virtual RAM, so I switched it over to my, uh, to my B drive, because there's still, you know, two terabytes on there, even though I've moved, I think, about 60% of all the files I need to move over there. <clears throat> um, and, yeah, I, it's just awesome to have the future because I essentially just moved my entire documents folder over. I didn't go through and find the files I need to keep. I just said, screw it, I'm moving the whole thing. And it worked. Of course, I'm going to have to reinstall a crap ton of programs, but whatever. <clears throat> so yeah, it's just a, a weird thing. Um, so what we're going to be going over today is going to be the some of the cooling perks. Got a bunch of the hardware that came in today. Actually, most of the hardware, if not all of it, except for some parts that are still coming in there. Oh, let me see. What else did I need? No, I think this is all the, the cooling parts that I needed. So it's going to be all the cooling hardware, minus um, some stuff that's only for the cooling loop, like the Mayhem's Pass Flood, sort of that. I think last night, I think that's going to be coming there probably sometime next week. And the motherboard, the SSD drive, the one terabyte drive that I'm getting, and uh, yes, one terabyte SSD drive. Crazy expensive, though. <clears throat> so not as much as it was just a couple months ago. And uh, the two 290Xs. Uh, uh, so we're going to start with the cooling parts. And you know you're, you're, doing, you're doing business with a good company when over a certain amount of um, money you spend with them, they send you these, you know, a packet of, like, gummy bears or some crap. Look at this stuff. From aqua tuning. You know, it's just awesome. Actually, there's going to be a little bit of a hijinks thing going on with the last box that's coming from aqua tuning because... I got something that's kind of more of a gag gift, but it is on the lines of edible stuff. <clears throat> because with aqua tuning, you have to have a, an order value of $75 or more to make an order there, for I guess because of the export costs. And I was like... The hell? It's just like, sound like a explosion of frigging uh, R&B dubstep and rap at the same time, I think. <clears throat> but you have to have an order value of like $75, and that was about 18 short. No, not 18 short. Um, no, yeah, 18 short. So I got an I got an additional order of the tubing I was getting, and I also got something else that was about eight eight or nine bucks to fill it out. So let's go. I guess we we'll go with this because I just pulled it out right now. So in this small white unsuspecting box, you have um, one of the deadliest things known to mankind: a tubing cutter. And this thing is not very sexy. I mean, if you watch, I've seen any of J Two Cents' videos. He has this J Two Cents videos. He has this nice uh, tube cutter. Mine's not, you know, it's not necessarily like that. But look at this thing. It's just a massive blade on here. That's perfect for cutting off fingers. So, all you mobsters out there watching my videos, you know, you wanna make a point, or any assassins out there, instead of using your ancient, old school, should I say, old as hell, you know, methods for chopping off fingers. You know, Get one of these. That'll work out pretty well. <clears throat> but no, I was just like, you know, I should get a tubing cutter because maybe if I decide to make this a thing and make, you know, water cooled builds for people, um, get some money on the side, then I'd need it. But I just figured, you know. And this is the only tubing cutter they had, this, this crazy looking thing. Uh, there's a German joke in there, but I'm not going not gonna to go there. Um, so that's what was in this. Actually, let's put it back in the box. that over there. Um, next up we have the packing list. No, I'm not going to go over that. Um, here's the funnel, the Phobia funnel. 
Um, so I'll show you how that works. I'm going to show you how some of the stuff works with uh, the hand, with the help of my uh, one of my uh, heat killer card uh, card blocks. So this is a box of Alpha Cool fittings, and I'm pretty sure these are the male to male fittings. So you could say these are the the gay fittings, if you will. Yes, I went there, and I'm probably going to hell for it. But. So essentially what they are is just essentially you know, a fitting that has uh, G14 threads on both sides so you can, can connect two things together. Um, again, we'll, I'll show you how some of this stuff works. I'll just keep one of them. They're all individually packaged, so that's kind of stupid, but that's how they're packaged, and so they send you a crap ton of them. Um, they actually add them in here pretty well. They actually put them together like this, so they form a little box. You just stick them in there. Didn't have to deal with EPS's insane bullcrap today. So I have with the first box. I would have gotten it a day earlier, but uh, because it's coming from Germany or because AquaTuning is paranoid, they require somebody to sign for it. And if there's nobody to sign for it, then UPS has decided that they won't leave it, and you have to go through this stupid process. And you can't change if you know that there's nobody not going to be anywhere to sign for this stuff. You can't change it until they've already tried to deliver one. So you know you're wasting that time that you paid for. Plus, you have to add like maybe an additional five dollars on if you're going to go through and um, have them ship it to like a UPS point, sell point, or something like a UPS store to go pick it up somewhere else. I do that, got it uh, shipped to somewhere by my office, picked it up during lunch, extra five dollars. So this is the, um, the valve that I'm using to use for bleeding the system out when I need to do things. So this is open, and then it turns some, what, I don't know which way it turns, it turns some way, there we go, this way, and closes. It's a ball valve, I think, is what it's, what the, so the ball valve? Um, let's see, ANZ Phobia 2, Weg Kuglahan, 1 4th Gerhan, Delt, Black. I know it's, and it's in German because this stuff comes from Germany. So let's take my male fitting here and we'll, I'll show you how this works now. So this is a uh, double female sided fitting. So you take your the male side fitting and it just screws right into the 1 4th fitting like so. It's actually, it's actually double, it's a rotating thread here on this side. <clears throat> so what you do now is, is you take another, you take a, uh, a, uh, um, fitting, and it goes on the end of this. Like, say, this thing here, which is the, this is the Y fitting, which I'm going to be using to come off of the pump with. So it's going to go upside down, pump outlet from here down to the valve, and this goes out to the rest of the loop. Um, so, essentially this will then hook onto here like so. Of course, it's on the rotating side there. So it rotates, so you can rotate, well now it's unthreading from the valve. So essentially here you got this now, now this side will rotate however you need it to. And this side rotates too, so it's a double rotator. Essentially like this, it'll be sitting like this somehow, probably. Um, another thing that I might decide do, to do is to actually have it be um, a uh, like a piece of tuber or something, so I can actually ro like kind of run it off, so it's not sitting like this, or maybe just the tuber. I'm not sure. But yeah, let's make sure that's turned off, closed off, right now. So that's essentially how it'll be sitting in the the loop inside the case like this. And that's how these fittings work. Um, let me see, I want to make sure that I'm not screwing over something. I got some 90 degree fittings here. So essentially they're uh, female, female, both ends. Plug them in one side and then good to go. I got three of them. I only, I think I only need two, but I got three because it's always good to have one extra. Unless you uh, are sure you're only going to need one. Um, it's got those, put those over there. And this box here contains all of the actual compression fittings. I got 22 of them. They're all uh, aqua tuning fittings because they're cheaper than the Alpha Cool uh, fittings. So, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay, I might have to. Let me see. Just come off. 
Most or might. No. So I'm gonna have to go and buy some more parts. Um, I'm actually need female fittings instead of male ones. I don't know why I thought that this would work, but no. So essentially, what would happen is, like, if you were just gonna have a fitting going on here, you just attach it this way. Uh, it's kind of stupid to do it that way, but that's well, actually, that's how it would work. So then you put the, take off the compression fitting, and then you put the tubing in. Put this over the tubing. Tubing goes on here, and you just tighten it down, finger tight, and that would be, yeah, that would be your. Uh, You'd have your tube on there secured, and it wouldn't, you know, have a chance of. <clears throat> leaking or anything. Um, but I got 22 of those, so a ton of them as you can see. Um, barring the one that I just opened. Those will stay in here. Um, I may need to go get some more stuff though. Um, this will work, these will still work in some cases, but. There were some cases where there was going to be a, a chance of them going melt. Well, you know, I think it's still going to work because how this would work is you'd have this coming off of the, you'd have one of these stuck into the, um, either be this or an actual, uh, um, you know, compression fitting, one of these guys coming off of the pump top. I think it'll be this because I don't want, I'm gonna make sure that the loop is as short as possible. So like this off the. Well, no, it's gonna have to be a tube, so it'll have to be this. So it'll be a. A. Uh, so like this for a second. Uh, just imagine there's a tube connected between these two things here. Um. Where's the? There's like a tab somewhere that you pull onto. Yeah, just open this up from the bottom. So let's assume for a second there's um, a piece of tube between these two ends. This end is plugged into the pump top, and this end is just you know on the end of the tube. And let's just take this one out of the picture. So we got the tube going to that one, which is over here somewhere, off screen, and you got the tubing here to this one. So then this would just tie in right here, straight in. No need to uh, have one of the male to male end connectors. Well, it'd be on the other side, but there would be one on this side too. Um, so we'll use both of these. So this is consider there's a third one somewhere off screen here. It's got the tubing. Then we need one of these to come on to here. And this will come on to here. Now this is something you can do with a custom if you can't do with like a pre made one is go crazy on the and then we'd have another one of these, which I'm going to now unwrap. Because it's so awesome just to like open these up from the bottom and just like, yeah, it's awesome. Um, we have another one of these here. <laughs> then this would be going off to a tube that would then just have nothing on the end of it. And that would be the, you know, for the drainage thing. And so this is just going to be sitting inside of the case there, this Frankensteinian monstrosity. And um, off, so. Off of the, uh, uh, the outlet for the pump, so this goes out to the rest of the loop, and this comes down for the uh, uh, you know the bleeding system, if you will. Um, so that's pretty much how that how that works, how these work. And I didn't have to use the water cooler to, to show you how it worked. Um, the tubing is going to be one of the last things that I get here and shorted it, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's probably gonna be here sometime next week. Um, they didn't have Primo Chill, so I went with um, some other company. I forget what their name is now. But it's not in the, I don't think it's very popular here in America because I couldn't find it on Amazon. That's how you know something's not really sold that much over here in America. But they didn't have Primo Chill, which makes me think that's not sold much over there. At least not from Aquatuning. Um, <clears throat> so, what was it? Um... I could, I could get my phone with me. You'll find out when I get it, I guess. I'll remember when I get it. Too. So, um, let's see. Throw some of this stuff out here. Or mark it to be thrown out. Um, so the, the funnel, it's 
going with that. All this stuff has this awesome opening system. It's awesome. Uh, most of these bags just open from the bottom. It's cool. Now, this one is a lot smaller than I thought it would be, really. I thought it would be a not flexible funnel either. So, yeah, same thing. Um, you've got... Um, I say this is where it may not work at. Because it would have to go on one of these, essentially. Um, because the... No, no, I'm... I may be... No, I, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. I think this is the one instance where I'm right. Because let's say this is on a... Let's say this is on a piece of tubing that's coming off of this... One of these angles. So this way. You have the thread on thread. And this is a male to male connector. So, yeah, you're trying to connect four male ends together. Like so. And unless you use super glue and duct tape, it's not going to happen. Um, so I'll probably have to go... Maybe on Amazon, see if, they, if I can find some female to, uh, female female connectors. Um, or I could just use, you know, the third one of these that I bought three of smartly. See, who's, who, who looks smart now? Because I bought three of these. Now that I think about it. So you got the tube coming off, which has got that thing on it. The uh, fitting on it here. Um, so this way. And then you got this, which has got the male side on it as well. And there you go. If I can get it on here. There we go. See, this is why you buy extra parts, because you never know what you can just kind of make out of them. So, this actually is a lot more stable, if you think about it. Instead of having this just be a tube coming out to here, it's actually more stable. So, I can have this here, have the tube coming here, hold this here, and pour it like this, the like coolant into here. That's going to be a much more stable funnel, although it's still going to be kind of crazy. But see, this is why you buy extra parts, because you never know if you'll need to use something for something like this. So actually, I don't need to buy anything else. That's good. <clears throat> I actually only needed 20 of these uh, compression things, but I got 22. Uh, namely because, um, I don't know, I just did. So we'll see if that uh, turns out to be a good choice as well. Put that over there. Um, bag for this is already there. Actually, I want to take this. I want to keep this. So I'm just going to dump all this out over here for a moment. And we'll just, uh, then I have to put all the cooling parts in here. And a cooling hardware box. I'm going to have for forever. Um, let's see all this stuff. These. These in here. This in here, too. There's no water cooling system, is not. It's complete without some gummy bears stuck in there somewhere, jamming things up. Put all that in there too. Okay, and we got the uh, hose cover. So those are done now. And then you need to use the card to do anything. So um, let's do the motherboard last. I think I said I was gonna do it second, but. Do it last. So this box, the massive box, has well, three things. Surprisingly, it's got the EVO Samsung EVO 850 uh, SSD, and uh, all both the graphics cards. As I smash my phone into pieces with this box. So, I'm only going to open up one of these because we only need to go over one. They're the exact same card. Um, so, I'm just going to move one down. We'll go over the SSD card first. So, I think I'm not going with a uh, different drive. It was one terabyte. Um, a little bit cheaper, though. I decided not to, though, because um, this drive is one of the first drives uh, to use 3D VNAND, which was just something 